So North Korea announced this conference in 2018. And as we all know, North Korea has been subject to lots of economic sanctions. And crypto theoretically is a way out of the sanctions. So when I heard that North Korea was planning this conference, I thought this would be a great opportunity to see what North Korea has been doing with crypto because North Korea has been doing lots of shady stuff with respect to crypto. This might surprise you, but anyone can go. It was advertised to the public. And so you basically send in an application and it was around like 3,000 euros. So it, it was not cheap and that does not cover your flight to Beijing. I've read that North Korean airplanes, they're too old, so they can't really fly anywhere else. So it was actually like a trip back in time. You know, they actually look quite retro. There were eight of us foreigners going for that conference. One interesting thing when we landed was that one guy had his laptop taken away from him. I think they found pictures of his ex-girlfriend and they construed that as porn. And they said, you know, when you leave, we'll give this laptop back to you. That was quite a startling moment for us, especially for the person who had his laptop taken away. Generally, uh, the treatment of us, it was, it was not bad, you know. We stayed in a good hotel, we had good food, and the people who were chaperoning us around, they were nice people, we got along well with them. But the conference itself, it was definitely a little strange because how it was presented to the Koreans is that these eight foreign experts are going to come here to teach you all about crypto. Most of us, we were not expecting that. I'm a journalist in Canada. I write regular columns in this newspaper called the Financial Post and the Globe and Mail. And I am the author of two books of nonfiction, both of which were named by the CBC as among the best works of their respective years. I am also a bit of an early Bitcoin investor. I actually ultimately declined to present, but most of the people did that anyway. A lot of that was improvised. They just came up with it a day or two beforehand. I talked to this waitress at a restaurant and she had no idea what the word Bitcoin means. So she's never heard of the concept at all. I found that very weird. In terms of visitors or foreigners, there were only eight of us. Uh, there were like maybe 60 Korean people. They were basically the audience and we did not get any meaningful interaction with them. Virgil was the only American and he was the only person who went there as a presenter. The rest of us, we only realized that when we landed and we had this fact just thrust upon us. I didn't know Virgil Griffith before this trip, but you can tell that he's a really smart person. He's very curious about all sorts of things and he would explain aspects of the outside world to North Koreans. He was actually a hit among the North Koreans. They definitely liked him. Even while we were in North Korea, Virgil had actually told us that Americans, they can't go to North Korea without permission. So anyone in the world can go to North Korea except for Americans. So they have to seek permission from their government. So before Virgil went on this trip, he asked his government whether he could go. The government told him no. He told us he decided to go anyway. He was telling us in North Korea that when he finished with the trip, he was going to meet with uh, the State Department to tell them about the trip. The sense I get is that he thought that perhaps he was doing his country a favor. So it was really very shocking when I heard that Virgil got arrested on Thanksgiving. Eventually, uh, that meeting escalated into a meeting with the FBI. And toward the end of September in 2021, it was supposed to be a two-week trial, but he pleaded guilty on the first day, which was quite a surprise. And so there's a plea deal with up to six and a half years in prison. I do not doubt that North Korea has been stealing lots of crypto, has been doing lots of shady stuff. The people at the conference, I don't think they were North Korea's crypto people. I think there definitely is a lot of stuff that North Korea is doing with crypto, but they were not shown to us for the person who had his laptop taken away. The North Koreans did eventually keep their word. They gave it back to him. <laughs>